delighted to be a competitor with such a panel of uh, learned and uh, deeply expert uh, colleagues. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that if we had been uh, meeting about this time uh, 16 months ago or so, we would have probably had a report from another foreign policy campaign called Sounding of the Alarm, Ukraine's Drift uh, Towards Russia's Embrace and uh, Away from Its uh, National uh, Identity. Uh, over time, we've looked back at some of these events and see that there is a sort of a natural order to things. And the case that I would make is that I believe there is much more continuity, regrettably in some cases, and in some cases uh, uh, positively, uh, in the Ukrainian uh, experience. Uh, we're asked to speak about governance, and I think uh, governance as the World Bank uh, defines it in, in six broad categories, and I'll uh, try to address uh, a little bit of, of all of them to give you a sort of a sense of where I think things are headed. Clearly on the voice and accountability direction, there has been slippage regression, and I think we heard uh, a lot about it from uh, David Kramer's uh, 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 excellent presentation. However, I do think it is a little bit overwhelmed. I do think that it is correct to say that the prosecution of Yulia Tymoshenko and these prosecutions that appear to be politically uh, motivated and probably are politically motivated uh, should cease. They are casting a light on a number of positive developments in an extremely negative way. And it was a mistake by whoever, whatever the processes were that led at this point. And the, the sooner Ukraine can move beyond that point, the better clear picture we will have of what is, what is occurring. On the issue of uh, media, it's also very clear that on television, that television newscasts in particular are uh, moving in a direction where there is less and less uh, criticism and less and less space for the opposition. At the same time, that's balanced by the very immense power of the internet, which is now about 30%, 25 to 30% use and of the active, particularly active uh, uh, generation and the sort of the leading forces in society, to use a, a, a term from the past. Uh, uh, and secondly, uh, there are, as uh, Mr. Kulikov uh, represents, these very vigorous, highly rated TV talk shows that are on for three hours uh, round the, you know, each week on a weekly basis on all the major channels. They attract 15% ratings, 13, 15, 16%. Mr. Kulikov has been leading the pack uh, lately. They're on a hiatus over the summer, but they are completely free for all, where all, all comers are there. The opposition is extremely well and vigorously represented. In fact, I think they're a little too, uh, I would say, uh, competitive and charged, but in any event, I think it is possible for viewers and, uh, to, get a, to, get a, to get an impression. Civil society is remarkably vigorous despite these uh, heavy-handed attempts at intimidation, but there are sort of all sorts of paradoxical things. You know, the, a KGB guy talks with the rector of Catholic University, and six months later, a check for $10 million was given by one of the main political sponsors of, uh, of Mr. Yanukovych. So this is not Russia. This is not you know, bullying and intimidation. There is a sort of a pushback, and, and therefore I welcome these very harsh criticisms. Uh, but I think that we need to have objective and clear and true understandings of what is uh, going on, rather than, you know, unbalanced characterizations of the state of affairs. Demonstrations occur mainly without, uh, without incidents, spontaneously, even though there were laws that looked like there would be constraints on these. The atmosphere is not one where you know people are being marshaled, pushed back, uh, harassed, and so on. There are problems, there are serious problems in the way the media are being treated by uh, the, the, the president's uh, guard and, and so on, and those issues also have to be done. But again, all of this looks much more negative, much more dramatic in the light of this uh, prosecution of Mrs. Timoshenko and this even more uh, outrageous prosecution of uh, uh, Mr. Lutsenko, the former security minister, for a very Minor, minor terms. Let's talk a little bit about other, other, other issues. Uh, political stability and lack of violence, that's another of the governance criteria. I would say that despite the bumpy nature of Ukrainian rhetoric, there is stability, there is continuity, and there has been an orderly transfer of power heretofore at the national level. As regards the local elections that were held, I agree they were deeply flawed. I agree in many places uh, there were closely contested elections where it looks like the vote was uh, counted in a way that, and, and, and the results were counted in a way that uh, uh, advantaged 
uh, representatives of people close, who are closely aligned to uh, those in power. However, it should also be said that it is an open secret. Yulia Tymoshenko and Butte did not contest those elections. No money was spent on those elections. There were no advertising campaigns. There were no national money spent. She basically decided not to contest the elections, but to contest the holding of the elections. That's a, it's an open secret. That opened the door to Svoboda in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, in many constituencies. Uh, she had internal uh, three different factions and leaders vying for the leadership in the Lviv, Lviv administration. So it was, a, it was not all purely. And then she refused to back, to urge her voters to vote for other constructive alternatives to, to, to boost. She basically opted out of places where she was not allowed to register in, in, in Western Ukraine. So I think there's a, you know, there's a little bit of, I think both parties contributed, uh, contributed to, to this state of affairs. Uh, on government effectiveness, I think we have signs of improved government uh, effectiveness. Ukraine, for the first time, is developing a reform of its health care. I don't know if you know this, 20 years, no effort, no effort at all. This is the Soviet health care system, not budgeted, not allocated. It's just running on its own will. This is the first government that is, that is attempting to address this. It's a tragedy that the past governments, because of courtesy fighting or lack of concern, did not make this terrible issue, which affects lifespan, affects life results for, for millions of Ukrainians, was, was not addressed. Uh, the issue of uh, land reform, Ukraine will is it has a cadastre that was passed uh, today apparently. Uh, uh, a cadastre law will be uh, privatizing uh, its land. I think again a step forward in a halting and bumpy, bumpy ride. Uh, in terms of the pension reform, whatever may be may be said of the uh, uh, of the of this government and whether it is you know heeding the, the will of society, society never likes attacks on its own on its own interests and and therefore there will be some uh, some sacrifices and it is very hard to sell the estimates of government of billionaires trying to sell uh, an austerity program and a revision of, of social uh, of, of the pension system nevertheless for the benefit and the long-term benefit of the country it needs to be done i think that the problem is not that the government is not attempting this reform i think that the problem is that the, the government and the, the the group of people that are running this country country is overly represented by, you know, extremely rich, uh, extremely rich people, and it is extremely hard for that type of, uh, under that type of a circumstance, uh, to put forward that idea. On regulatory quality, lots of problems, but the reduction in staff of 30% across the board will mean fewer people to implement onerous regulations. That means just by, without changing even regulations, by having fewer people having the time to meddle with small business and so on, we're going to have longer-term improvements uh, in terms of the space for, for ordinary law. In terms of the rule of law, the Timoshenko case is typical of what we, you know, of, of the sad state of the lack of independence of the Ukrainian judiciary. But here again, I don't see a huge regression. What we saw before was a terribly corrupted and imperfect judicial system, which was able to function more or less on its own because of the sharp division of power and internecine fighting. Nothing fundamental changed in terms of the independence of the judiciary. It's just that power was structured in one direction, and the judiciary now bends the power here, whereas before, they, some bent in the direction of Yulia Dimashenko, some bent in the direction of Yanukovych, and some bent in the direction of, of, uh, of, of Yushchenko. But the, the fundamental problem uh, existed, remained, and remains uh, from the period uh, preceding. Uh, on one rule of law issue where I do think there is some progress, and that is, you know, we may have differences of opinion on this table, but I do think that the renewal of the serious prosecution and investigation of the role of President uh, Kuchma is also an answer to the fact that Yanukovych does not, uh, uh, only, only goes after his political opponents. This is the person that launched his political career, that nominated him to be president. Now, cynically, people may say he's not part of his inner circle, but that's someone from the establishment out of which Yanukovych came. And this is the first time we have this uh, serious, uh, serious uh, uh, look at the role of President uh, Kuchma in, in the uh, disappearance and uh, tragic death of Georgi uh, uh, Gagarin. And finally, on control of corruption, absolutely incredibly difficult, onerous, and continuous problems. Nothing has changed, in my view, in terms of there was no major anti-corruption campaign under the previous government. 
there is very little progress in this government except at the local level, where we are seeing serious prosecution at the level of Kiev, serious prosecutions of municipal officials. And at least we can say that that is one incremental progress, a step, a step for progress, and that is the attack on uh, municipal corruption, which in Kiev cost voters $15 billion of, of potential revenues to the state. Thank you.